Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our second podcast program. Uh, so I'm Stuart, and we are live on YouTube and Facebook. So throughout this, uh, if you want any questions to do with what's going on, just drop them down below. But I'll introduce our very special guest today, and it's Will Greenwood from ASG. Hello there. If you uh, want to introduce yourself. Well, my name is Will Greenwood. I'm from ASG. Yep. So uh, um, we are we're basically going to talk about Will's uh airsoft career if you'll uh, call it that to start with and then we'll go into asg as a as a brand but um so the, the first question we always ask people is how long have you been in airsoft um so uh, coming up on eight years yeah yeah coming up on eight years playing airsoft now and i know a lot of people don't like it but professionally in airsoft how long have you been uh, <laughs> sort of employed in the airsoft world has it has it been a permanent thing or is it relative is it just asg that is no, your no. professional career have you done bits before that so i actually started at a company called bravo one mm. for grange live gaming oh so you like marshalling yeah running games and stuff like that so you've got you've got a an experience of a, a player side of it and the marshall side of it and obviously now the the, the back seat sort of um industry industry side yeah. of it and stuff like that so what what made you go from so obviously playing, enjoying it, delving deep into it? I mean, you've you've done YouTube bits before mm. and stuff like that. What what made you want to then make a career and a, a livelihood out of it? Was it was it something you sort of drifted into, or was it a kind yeah, of a want as well? It was it was it, there's definitely a want there because who doesn't want to do the hobby for a job? Yeah. And when it's there, where there's a good career path as well. It's something you, it's a no brainer, yeah. isn't it? You want to yeah. do what you love. As a job. It's, it's that whole thing of like it's like a footballer in it. It's it's that thing. If you can do your hobby and earn some money from it, if you go to work every day and you do a full day's work, you've worked really hard, but then it doesn't feel like you're at work. You, you're winning. You, you're having a a good time. I mean, I do it, so it's it's a lot of fun. Um, so with with like the <laughs> the career aspect of it and uh, being a marshal and and all that kind of stuff you've you've probably had a much more big deeper insight into gear and 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 had a chance to test a lot of bits out so your setup we, we can start with that i mean do you do you do you go into a site dripping with gear or is it just <laughs> essentials that do you know i used to uh do quite a lot of impression kits yes i used to wear as they say gucci gear cry all that sort of jazz but now actually becoming more of a as, a, as they say, seasoned player and done it a bit more. I actually turn up with bare minimum. Yeah, so you, you, you yeah. can do that thing where you just like, you'll, you'll wear absolutely everything, love it, but then the longer you play, the more you think, oh, I'm just going to do this efficiently. Every now and again, I'll go back and, and, and wear everything, the plate carrier, the, the gear and everything like that. But if you just go into, like you were saying, it was like the Grange or anything like that, it's, it's a small indoor site, so it's hit it hard, 10, 20 minute games. Is that the kind of gameplay you prefer? To sort of full outdoor games, or um, definitely, I think yeah. I think the one thing with me is is I don't actually get any adrenaline from playing outdoors. Yeah, I think it's because of the range of shooting airsoft guns. You can see someone quite paced. far away, yeah. and you can't engage them, so your adrenaline kind of goes for me. Yeah, not not everyone, obviously, just yeah. just for me myself. I like knowing that every corner I go around, I could get shot. Yeah, and, and yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, so you maybe not quite speed soft, but fast aggressive play indoors any corners a threat but you've gone down from that full gear helmet everything down to something a bit more basic so what's yeah. what's your kind of loadout looking like now so my loadout now is i wear a plate carrier with just the mags in the front yeah and just a u-back and jeans with boots that that's so even, that, the, even the belt kit's gone. Yeah, belt all that kit's kind of, gone. Yeah. It, there's nothing flapping around, nothing heavy. Don't yeah. have a sidearm. No. I'm like, nope. No, it's just <laughs> no whatever's, whatever's primary. And is that, yeah. is that has that changed? With, like you've gone to the Evo as a primary and is it is it because of that or do you just find that you just weren't using the sidearm? Because I've done that a lot. I wear a belt rig. I've got yeah. my holster on it. I've got my mag pouches. But nine times out of ten, I won't even put it in because I know I'm just not going to use it. Yeah. Um, going into CQB sites and stuff like that, I might put it in but not the mags. And then throughout the day, when things start getting heavy and stuff, the primary goes, and I'll just run around with the yeah. pistol for a bit. Yeah. Um, so, apart from the Grange and stuff like that, is is that like your sole stomping ground, or did you like to travel and and get around a bit with sites? Um, I actually, 
but traveled quite a lot yeah went to quite a lot of sites um tried most of cqb sites because when you play at one site enough uh, it doesn't it, i don't want this to come across cocky but yeah. you know every area of it yeah i know what you mean. and it it's, gets to a yeah. point where it's repetitive because you sit there and you go oh, i know someone's going to come around this corner at one point and they do or you sit there and go oh, i can get a cat sitting camp here and i can yeah. get like 30 kills so it, just... it almost comes a little bit of a dry not dry is a bad word but repetitive it's, it's, it's repetitive and if yeah. you're running around a little bit crazy and you know where people are it's a little bit it's that advantage that other people can't get when they're new oh yeah yeah so definitely traveling around gives you that sort of thing yeah um but we uh we've been live for a bit and i think we've got some questions coming in already oh. so we'll we'll go Fantastic. to the we'll go to the viewers <laughs> and uh we've got some questions coming in so Andrew on uh, Facebook, my question can be uh, tuning. Which company do you recommend for future tuning of my e new Evo 3? Uh, so when it comes to upgrade parts mm -hmm. and bits and bats like that, so ASG have, do have a massive range of um, ultimate parts, ultimate yeah. parts, upgrade parts, change parts. Uh, so you run an Evo now. Yep. Uh, anything you've done to it or anything you'd like to do to it, is I think is where he's going with that is the, right, okay. the newest one is what would you change to it? and uh, I don't know which Evo he's actually got so if he's got the carbine or the bed mm. or anything like that but what have you got what would you do to yours so I've got the carbine mm. but what I've done is I've switched it out with the SMG barrel and put a trace unit in so it sits inside of the carbine right, fork yeah. so you can't even see it it looks really it looks really nice because it's quite flush yeah. off the front um, and I've also put a Bearing, you know, the bearing spring guide. Yeah. Uh, with some ultimate gears in there, so I can run it on eleven one. Yeah. So that's that's yeah, with a lot. higher spring. Isn't we, it? Yeah. we mention it a lot in our live streams with UK power limits, and mm -hmm. obviously with the Evo being uh, from Denmark, they're allowed much higher powers than us and everything like that. So people always think that SG recommend it for eleven one and everything like that, but we always <coughs> say that you can't in the UK because yes. power limits. You get pre engagement, and, and it's not a problem with the ASG. It, it with the the Evo, it's the spring isn't strong enough to put the piston forward before you get pre-engagement. So you're looking at maybe gears, everything shredding, everything shredding. Yeah, so also the cycle it's, speed. It's it, yeah, it's yeah. that that's coming around too fast compared to the spring being able to put the piston forward. So you either change your gears or just short stroke it. If you don't know what that means, you can speak to <laughs> plenty of text. Text that will, will help. You, yeah. If you go back to our <clears throat> podcast about workshop, uh, you'll understand what we mean by that. Uh, but we've got another question coming in, so we'll have another question. Kieran on YouTube, uh, how do you think indoor sites will bounce back following the pandemic? I know Project X may not be reopening. Uh, so if you've got, uh, so I know Halo Mill, our site is reopening. Uh, so we've got two sites, we've got an outdoor and an indoor mm -hmm. site. Uh, I think you might have been there and I've played there plenty of times. Uh, but we're slowly reopening. Do you, do you think that it, players need to sort of be a bit more... Um, sort of target the CQB sites rather than just going to their local and all like that. We we kind of want to players to, to get back into them indoor sites and mm. give them that cash injection that they might need and, and things like that. Do you, do you think the Grange is, is going to survive or do you think CQB is going to become a rarity? Well, you know, Bravo one's gone now. Mm. Um, and the Grange, their site is an outdoor, primary outdoor now, but they have some CQB bits in there, which is good. But I think... The only issue is, is there's quite a lot of landlords over the pandemic who didn't give people breaks. Right. And they still expected rents. People, eh. I don't think it's not going to survive because there are very much a lot of people who really enjoy CQB. Yes. Running it as well as playing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I like our outdoor site. I, I, as, as much as I, I love running it, it's, uh, it's, it's a great day and making people happy at the end of it is a great feeling. So oh, these, yeah, yeah. these guys, seeing all these people run around their site, coming out, dripping with sweat, smiling, <laughs> got every war story that they want to talk about yeah, afterwards. Yeah. Oh, oh look, at, look at this. Look at this one, look at that one. <laughs> oh, I got that guy around that corner or something that they've been trying. And, yeah. and do you think it's uh, that CQB sites still need to focus on like the gameplay and stuff like that? Or do they need to start offering... Uh, more options like training sessions do they need to go to more days a week or things like that so i think they should just stick to what they were doing because yeah. it was working all the thing is now at the moment is just restrictions so i think actually they're going to work off and actually be better off because what will happen is it will create some sort of exclusivity yeah. so if you've got a limited amount of numbers and you're booked up every week people will automatically go oh, i need to book for the next like, two, two three, three weeks, weeks oh, advance, i need, I need yeah. to and then when the numbers stack up and they see 
you know, even if they don't announce, oh, we're back to full capacity now, yeah. and someone sees that there's openings, they'll go, oh, we need to book on because we need to book la- on the last three weeks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think from that mentality, they'll do quite well yeah. once all the restrictions have gone. Yeah, Jay, it's probably a huge blow to everyone because of these restrictions. Yeah, got and I mean, back. like we've had, we've had the outdoor sites reopening and everything like that, mm. and like Halo's been reopening, but the the CQB sites is is that thing that people want. They've they've missed it and they've not been able to do it, so. They need to get on it, get these booking systems up and, and, and jump in these sites as soon as you possibly can. Because if you've not played CQB, it's hard, it's fast, it's yeah. aggressive, it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it, if, you a lot of fun. if you haven't played CQB, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what? Go and play CQB. Uh, so we've got another question rolling in uh, online. Uh, Peter on YouTube, missing the mighty Will Greenwood question. Uh what gives uh, you the craziest buzz, buzz in airsoft? Uh, so, if there's anything that you can do, what what gets your juices going? Oh man, uh, it's quite sadistic. It's quite sadistic, but having a tracer and either shooting someone in the bum or the legs, and, and just their initial reaction is just the funniest thing ever. I don't know why. It's just some. It sounds really childish or sadistic, but when you shoot someone in the bum and their reaction where they grab their bum and like jump in the air. It's, it's like, that mix of, he's got behind me oh, and he shot me where it it's hurts. It's the funniest thing in the world. Or if they don't know you're there yeah, and you shoot them and they do that like jump flinch you, it's thing. That, it's that hide and seek vibe, oh, isn't it? it? When you get behind someone, you get that, you get that <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get caught, I'm going to get caught. But then when it, the, the payoff is... It's yeah. so sadistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that I think we had, we had that a couple of weeks ago and... We were playing the Sterling again. That was a little bit of an in, a CQB site, and we were cutting around buildings, and you had to be a super quiet. And CQB, the worst thing that can happen is when you step on a BB and, and it <laughs> flicks off yeah. and it's a wall. And you're like, Did anyone hear it? Did anyone see it? Oh Did no! It? Uh, and it's that whole. It's that. It goes down to that childhood thing of hide and seek. Mm. You hide in a corner, and you've got that adrenaline just coursing through you. And if you get away with it, the payoff is. Oh, it's Amazing. good. Oh, yeah, of course it and, is. Yeah. And guys that haven't run trace units indoors, and there's like three so or four people fun. running them. Um, it's it's a ton, a ton of fun. Um, so with with like CQB and stuff like that, um, there are masses and masses of different sites throughout mm-hmm. the site. Mm. Is it do you, do you prefer the sort of single day, just going dropping in, or do you do you like the sort of Milsim style of stuff, or is that sort of dwindled off with the limiting your kit do you just like to turn up play and disappear um i think now very much so with covid being on and events being restricted can't Mm. turn up to them it usually is now just the day events isn't it so i think now i'm more swaying towards the day events i did used to like themed weekends enjoying it kitting up because you you dressed up in what you think is gucci gear and it you know, I, I don't believe anyone who says different to what I'm about to say now. It's, look what I'm wearing. Look how good I am yeah. with what I'm wearing. Look what, how expensive what I'm wearing. It's, it's, it is what it is. You yes. know? And if anyone tells you different... It's that, it's, it's, that's, <laughs> and, and it's your pride in your gear as well. Yeah. I mean, a, lot, yeah. a, lot of it, a lot of it isn't that whole thing of, I'm wearing it because it's better. It's, mm. it's the pride in what you've oh, put course. together. And, and you, you, you quite... It's, it's, I've built this and I've, I've, yeah. I've done my, like the research and everything like that. I was about and, to say, yeah, the research that I found was the coolest part. Yeah. Finding the bargain yeah. for something that is quite expensive and you find it for not that expensive. You're like, oh, <laughs> it's a good bargain. But good you're, you're on about like with the restrictions and, and what COVID's done to airsoft. Do you think there is going to be, I, I, I genuinely think this is the thing. I know a lot of lads that have come back to the sport, um, it's been like that rest that people have wanted or mm-hmm. needed but didn't want to stop. So do you think there is that not playing for so long, there's going to be a lot of people come back to the sport because they've either, oh, we can go out, oh, no, I can't be bothered, I can't be bothered. But now there's been nothing for however long. Is Do you reckon Airsoft's on its path upwards with the players that have missed it for a little bit, with the players that are regular and desperate to go? Mm. And I think that the um, the crowds at sites are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And again, that could be positive for the CQB sites. Yeah. So I've got a, a bit of a, a theory behind this anyway. Mm. Uh, we all know you get the airsoft who's very keen for the first year. Second year, they say, oh, usually the second to third year is the pinnacle of whether they continue to play airsoft or whether they give it up. Mm. And what I think is people were in that second to third year and they got told they couldn't play again and they've gone okay, don't really mind at the moment. And exactly as you say, they kind of got the thirst for it. But then you've got the guys who were in their fourth, fifth, who gave it up, but then got told they couldn't play it and went, 
can't tell me I don't want to play it. Yeah. I want to, I'll play what I want to want to play. <laughs> so yeah. So I it's, think it's that's it's what's that, happened there. That thing of you, you, you've got all your gear, you've had it, you're on a break from airsoft and then you put it away and then COVID happens and everyone started renovating the house and they pulled yeah. the boxes out and they've got on the camera and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this. And yeah, I want to play. The mates again, it's like, and something comes up and you can book it and you, you're like, oh, let's all get on this. And you're going to get groups coming back. Yes, and, teams. And, and teams and people reforming. And I, I've seen that quite a bit at, um, at Proving Grounds and the indoor site is like groups of people are getting together and getting that, that Instagram and, and Facebook teams together and just enjoying it for what it is. And mm. regardless of what other people want to do with the sport, that I think that's the best thing about it is you can play this how you want to play it. Whether or not it's dripping with kit or going street lime or speed soft or anything like that, do you dress like. like you want to dress and it's fine. Do what you enjoy, yeah. isn't it? It's what 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 you what do you think is cool? Yeah, do you know, you you can you can absolutely cover yourself in every bit of kit, big big helmets and like guys in CQB wearing the walk helmets and stuff like yeah, that. They yeah, absolutely love them and there's these massive <laughs> things on their head. And I'm like, I don't like covering my face. No, me, um, yeah, it, I just I run at about a thousand degrees. So <laughs> covering my face, it, it just I get warm, I get sweaty and horrible. But yet yeah, these guys rocking these massive helmets and they love it. I don't know. There's ones with like built-in fans, isn't yeah. there? Is that is that like the same we, thing? There's or? loads of there's loads of. Um, so I think we had that 3D printed one yeah, recently yeah. that has all the fans and That's stuff cool. inside it. Um, the X Fox system that we we've had it just close to the back of your helmet. And, and you it wire it in and it's got flows through flows through cool absolutely genius bits of kit and really 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 cool uh, I think we've got another question coming in nice uh, Kieran ooh controversial we'll, we'll go straight on with it. headshots <laughs> yes or no so I find if it's the only thing showing take the shot yes. if you see full body shoot the chest or if you want to be like me shoot the legs because it's funny I've, if, you've, if, if, if you know? I had an entire body stood in front of me the legs hurt more yeah and, and yeah. As, like hitting the head or all like that it's a short sharp and everyone gets this and this isn't an airsoft thing this is a human thing yeah. you get a knock on the head you instantly get angry and go where is it of course you do and, and where's the just, threat it's, it's where's the threat where's this and you just you, you're building that sort of aggression if someone is literally just sticking a head around a corner it's a clean shot it's Take totally it. fine if I've got an entire body inside the legs or the love handles mm-hmm. and you just get oh god yeah oh, it's, and again it's that and there's no risk of losing a tooth shoot in there yeah. there's no risk of someone going in their glasses you know breaking eye pro yeah. I, I find yeah, if the full body's on show, chest, legs. So it's a bigger do. target as well. If you're, yeah. if you're that, I mean, ranges that people shoot at with sort of decent builds, even even at 20, 30 meters, a head is a tiny, tiny target yes. yeah. compared to this big plate or like legs, big asses that are I think it's there. from uh, not actually tactics. You know, tactics. Yeah. I think it's the movie game scene. Like, yeah, when headshots you, cause more headshots, damage. or it's like I get more points for doing a yeah. headshot, or or Unfortunately, you get the sad, small percentage of people who just like to inflict that level of pain. Mm. Do you know? And but saying that, there's other parts of the body that are more painful. There are, yeah. yeah but that, that's exactly it. I just want to. <laughs> I just. I'll take a love minute. handle. I'm going to stop. The, but the love handle, oh. you get that. You get that sort of slight sickly feeling. Yeah. Just walking back. <laughs> oh. But yeah, around here, and then and, and it's the same. I mean. If you want to be really, really cheeky, try and shoot someone in the nipple or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah. Oh my god, that's that's <laughs> evil. <laughs> that's if you want to, be, evil. yeah. So I mean, yeah, saying it like that with the computer game thing, I've never thought of it that way yeah. before. But I think it's definitely part of it. Um, with like, say, the Call of Duty and stuff mm, like that, yeah. it's, they, they do more damage. Yeah. You get more points. Yeah. It's cooler. Um, You're seen so, as a better player if you can shoot ahead, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it's a smaller target. target yeah. But when when airsoft is the type of sport that it is that it's it's not really about because obviously these online games mm. and cod and stuff like that there is a slight extra factor of that individual because you're leveling yourself oh, of course up. of course but whereas airsoft i think a lot of people don't realize that if you actually communicate and work as a team you works just better it. So, so much better so much so much better um but i, I like cqb i bet you'll get that as well as soon as you you'll grab someone you've never met them before and you, you go, go you come in with me and you go <laughs> yeah. and, and you work yeah. as a team and it, and it and you flow through but yeah yeah good question um that was a good question. Con- controversial. Yeah, well, it was a little uh, controversial. Uh, so we've got a, a further question. We've got more questions coming in thick and fast. So we've got another one. Paul Eastwood, uh, how is Brexit affecting the import of airsoft equipment into the country <sighs> now? Uh, is it taking longer to get stuff? Uh, so from our point of view, yes, um, bringing stuff in was taking longer. Uh, sending stuff out. Uh, we currently can't export anymore, but you, you'll have a broader picture of 
the, the being able to Industry. send to the UK, UK mm. and the the other countries. So, are you seeing a um, a much longer period between things coming out and and hitting shelves and restocks and things like that? Uh, and can you see an end to it? Um, <laughs> this is, yeah, this is another one where it's like, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yes, is there is a delay. I have seen a very big uh, difference in the delays of what there were last year, the year before, and the reason is that you know the Suarez Canal, yeah, that, that was, was a big one, was but also the price um, and supply and demand of aluminium has gone through the roof. Uh, that people just can't get it. Manufacturers in Asia, yeah, pretty much non-existent, and also airsoft in the grand scheme of things. Is very low down in priority when it comes to car manufacturers yeah. or tech giants like Apple and Samsung. We're we're very yeah, last if we, in if the you, queue. If you if you live in a hobby, it is your everything, and it's oh, your of entire course. universe, and you think yeah. it's this massive thing. And airsoft compared to other hobbies is big, mm. but in a global market, it is it yeah. is tiny. So yeah. you can. I've always described to people to say how big is airsoft, and you're trying to say, make it sound big. There's probably more companies that make parts and bits for airsoft than there are that make cars it's just huge like different yeah. names brands and stuff like that yeah. but if you bring that all together there's only so many people actually doing this and it's just different names yeah and then if someone goes oh we've got these people that want to play with toy guns and this that and the other we need these cars building we need these ships of course. building yeah it's the, the price of things just change and exactly and yeah. in, in asia it's definitely definitely asian businessmen and marketing it's money talks. Yes. Do you know? But but that's all business, isn't it? You know, money talks. And that's when they get given, you know, I'll give you this much million and we, yeah. we come over here. But you can, you can, can you see, obviously you've had them delays and stuff like mm. that and we've had the delays. Can you see it sort of almost plateauing out? Are you seeing that regular stream of stuff coming back now? Regular shipments? Yes. And it becoming easier for you? Because I presume you were probably pulling your hair out with <laughs> yeah. everything, every every yeah. shop owner. Where's, yeah, where's yeah. this? Where's yeah, that? And yeah, you're like, yeah. we want it. And and we've always had it. We've had it in the shop. And it's and it's it's a similar thing to like the Ucara when someone yeah. comes in saying, oh, why can't you sell it? Me, it's like we want to. Of course, we want to there's obstacles. Car. There's there's, there's things we have to jump through to yeah. be able to give it you. Yeah, and the, and there's a fair thing. To of it course, as well, of course, from and your point of view. One of the nice things we've got here though, with, with especially with um well, it's not nice, it's just, you know, when you want to do a good job and it's makes it better or easier yeah. to think of, it's everyone's in the same boat. Yes. Yeah. That that's yeah. what makes it easier. You know, I sit there people wanting some products that we can't supply and I yeah. sit there and go, Oh that's really frustrating. I, I want to make sure everyone gets everything. But then I sit back and go, it's not it's not just me. Yeah, know, it's not, I mean, not just ASG. Other it's it's, half ev- works, it's everyone. Other half works for a large furniture company. Right. We won't say who it is. But she'll come home every day going, oh, we can't get stock. We can't get stock. And this is a multi-million yeah. oh, dollar God, company yeah. across yeah, the yeah. world. And they're low on stock as well. So you've got to think where Airsoft sits in that um, branch. And then ASG, obviously, being a European one, it's mm-hmm. it's probably their, their deliveries are probably going to European companies really quickly because it goes by road. And oh, God, other, yeah. And then importing yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. So they're probably coming out at a fair stream yep. but to get over here takes longer do you know what's so frustrating which uh if there's any europeans watching this isn't this isn't any any slander <laughs> or anything i'm just i'm just saying but what happened was when we when we left the european union when we actually left it beginning of yeah, this year commodity codes uh europe changed every commodity code that should be getting into the uk mm. and the uk didn't have anything to reference off so they asked the european union for what commodity codes to be used and the european union said no so find it yourself. Yeah, you, you left. You left the EU. Find it yourself, and that's why there was such a big delay up to, up to three months to be able to import from Europe because people didn't have the right commodity codes or didn't or weren't given the access to it straight away. Same with the EORI numbers. Yes, yeah, so like, that wasn't a thing until like a month after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so we'll come back to um, sort of gameplay and stuff like that where. We'll throw we'll throw it way back to oh. <laughs> the the YouTube days of oh, Will, Green, Will yeah. Greenwood. Yeah. Um, yeah, like your your sort of view opinion. I mean, again, being in the sport, you you're surrounded by it, so it feels a lot bigger. Yes, and this yeah, and the other, yeah, and, yeah. and like me going back, I I was sort of on the edge of it, came into it, and started doing it professionally. Do you think there is a larger 
uh, airsoft sort of YouTube aspect now to maybe when you started? And is everyone trying to get a piece of it? And do you think it's beneficial? Um, yeah. Uh, so it is, I'd say, now. And very much so, it depends on what, the, what you mean by beneficial. Do you mean it as to make money? Do you mean to make it a job? Or do you mean just for you? As in, or... every, I think every airsofter probably has a little bit of responsibility for keeping the sport alive yeah. and growing yeah. it and everything like that. And But everyone wants that 15 minutes of fame oh, of, yeah, of YouTube. Yeah. It's, it's part of your... It's just part of genetics nowadays. You yeah. just want to be the seen. big dog. You want to be seen, social media, everything like yeah. that. And if you can if you can be lucky enough to make a career out of it and everything like that, do you do you see it as as positive for growing airsoft or can you see it going the wrong way? Um, I see it, it. It depends on the person who's doing, of course. Mm. And if you're doing it for ways of as a businessman, not really caring about the sport, it can be dangerous mm. because a lot of the things I did was I made sure you know politeness. Um, only shot one or two shots. I never did full auto. Never, never did any spamming of triggers. I only, you know, I even made a challenge video which I wanted other YouTubers to do called the one shot challenge, which mm. you have to have one shot on each person for the whole day. You're only allowed to shoot one shot at someone. And if you miss, you've got to go somewhere else. Yeah, you got to run somewhere else. Oh, yeah, yeah, either. yeah. And the reason behind it was because when you're in CQB and you shoot someone quite like overshoot them. It's different to if you're far away. Because far yeah. away, if someone sees you're far away, they'll go, oh, it's too far to deal with it. I'll just shout a little bit yeah. and go back. But if they're right next to you, it's a snap response. So, you know, that, that's why I advocate that. People having fun, smiling. But yeah, I think definitely an opportunity for it now because there are actually less people now doing it than there was when I started doing it because yeah. everyone just went, oh, this is an opportunity to do it. Let's just go out and do it. But the technology is like way better Gone. now. The, oh, the, so the Go, much. The GoPros, the cameras, everything well, like that. But they're actually making proprietary cameras for Zoom now. Yeah. I had to glue my Mobius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to take had to make it apart. Their own yeah. And stuff like that. I, it, yeah. it goes back to that MOSFET thing. I'll come yeah. to that in a minute after we finish the YouTube side. Yeah. But I did a very similar thing a while that you doing the one shot thing. I did the hit video, yeah. the greatest hits video. So there's you, there's, and there's many people that have done it in the past is you're making this as an entertainment thing. So editing it and doing anything like that, make it look as cool as possible. Oh, yeah, it's got to be cool. But yeah. at the end of it, all I did was I showed the one second of every single hit that yes. I get pointing back at me. Yeah. So it's just me shouting hit That's for about cool. two minutes. That's cool. So if everyone did that at the end of their video, it's like, oh, it does get shot. Yeah. But, oh, you yeah. want about like the God complex thing? It, well, no, I'm, I'm totally fine with people editing a video for it to be entertainment. Mm. But Let them know. try and show the mm. other side of it as well. Yeah. Um, that that it's not uh, just all John in one Wick. go. It's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any director that you can think of, because I've forgotten every director. <laughs> right um, but yeah, it's it's that whole thing of try and show it from both sides. Yes. Because you're trying to show what airsoft can be at its peak and really mm. really cool and awesome, all your gear running around buildings and shooting yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. But you want to show that a good airsoft day. If I don't get shot, I get bored. Oh god, yeah. You want you want to shoot yeah, lots of people, yeah. but you want to get shot loads because if there's no risk, it's boring. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. It's about what we said before. You know, when I'm playing CQB, I want to know that I, I could turn this corner and get hit and be someone there. Exactly, yeah. I could get hit without yeah. risk. There's no reward. Oh yeah. And, and if you're no, running around the CQB site and you think at any point I could get shot in the back, you've got to check. <laughs> yeah. And again, yeah, it comes yeah. back to that team. Oh yeah. Thing. If you're running, watch my team back. Yeah. And, and right. trusting that player on your your right and everything like that. Mm. But yeah, I do, I do think YouTube has a very very strong. Especially now. Influence on... Because people watch YouTube more than TV now. Yes. Do you know? I find it quite cool, but also you sit there and go, wow. But do you (laughs) you think Airsoft's quite hard to make entertaining on video? Yeah. I've always had that thing. like, Like, we make videos every day. We talk about them. And having it in my hand, it's really, really cool. But if I watch a review, as soon as they pull the trigger, it's a little bit of like this anti climax. Yeah. It's still just an electric gearbox. Oh, exactly. It's, yeah, and you, you can big it up as much as you want, but there's there's a there's a big big chunk of talent in people making entertaining videos. Very much so. Um, but with that though, if you're doing review videos, usually people who watch reviews mm. are only people who want to buy it. Yes. Do you know what I mean? They won't watch a review on something they don't really care about. Yeah. So you can work your hardest to do a video 
that's so well edited looks amazing you're the most entertaining person in the world i know you've, you've pulled out like five heads you look great you know, <laughs> you know it looks amazing but then if it's not something someone doesn't want to buy won't. or they don't want they won't google it yes. or they won't youtube it you, that, that's why yeah you i kind of yeah, yeah, get what you mean it's like i i've i watch like you, you watch the evite videos and mm. they, they throw all these bits and bats in and then as soon as he pulls the trigger on the range you're like oh i'm so disappointed <laughs> I He's, thought it was going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple more questions coming yep, cool. in from uh, the web. Uh, Kieran, again on Facebook. Uh, PB, have you seen the increase in business due to difficulties importing from European airsoft? Oh, this is a good question. Um, this is a good question. It's, I mean, this is more direct than me. I mean, we yep. brought him in, but you're totally <laughs> you're quizzing me now. No, I'm enjoying um, this. <laughs> so I think, like what I was saying, I think airsoft as a whole is on a rise. Mm-hmm. Um do I think uh, people have stopped importing? Probably not. Is it harder? Yes. Do you want to wait six to eight weeks for something that might turn up? But our our thing that we've always said is try returning it. If if you get something, you've not seen it before, you've not touched it before, <coughs> um, you have it two weeks and it breaks, It's that's it, it's done. If If people are ordering from the UK and they've got it, they can return it, they can swap it, they have the warranty that's expected yeah uh, of it i mean uh, the, like the evo warranty and stuff like that's that's always been one of the driving points of asg and mm. stuff like that i think once once things settle and we get back to a bit of a normality if people are quite happy to wait that eight weeks but it's that whole thing of when it turns up if it breaks that's it it's done yeah you can't do anything oh god it. yeah yeah if you if you want something and you you want to be able to return it swap it anything like that just order in the uk yeah um well said i think there's a few things completely slightly off topic but watching a few amazon series recently with a very famous <laughs> car uh, oh actor, oh yes yeah, yeah that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, for yeah, me yeah. recently it was showing that we need to sort of buy uk rather than oh yeah and it shows mm. what happened to him after a year if you've not watched it go watch it if you're not on about um but yeah uh, so i think we've covered a hell of a lot about Will himself. Uh, I think we've got a few more questions before we go to a break, so we'll cover a few more questions. Yeah. Uh, we'll throw them up. Sounds good. Uh, YouTube, will you be getting any Umrex AEGs in? I think this has gone slow, slight <laughs> D-line from ASG. Uh, short answer, yes. Um, the MP7 should be on its way, the one-to-one, which is exceptionally cool. Mm. Um but that has actually just brought me a a, a very... Oh, I might save that until after the future of Airsoft Tech. I might save that. <laughs> There's a few little Gucci bits that I've been okay. looking at recently that oh, we'll yeah. try and cover after the break. Oh, but, interesting. Um, what we'll do now is we'll go to a break. We'll, uh, we'll refill Will's brew because he's huh. savage with it and he's just constant. I like and, coffee. <laughs> uh, he can't get enough of it. So uh, we hope you enjoy these little adverts that we've made for you. But we'll be back in about 15 minutes. Nice. At Patrol Base, we believe every airsoft gun deserves a home. Even the ones that have been left battered and bruised. These guns don't need donations, they need homes. Visit our Boneyard section today, because you're not just getting an amazing deal. You're helping save an abandoned airsoft gun. The airsoft industry has evolved a lot over the last decade. Whether it be small skirmishes, big games, or speedball tournaments, one thing remains the same. You need that competitive edge to win. The HG Scorpion Evo was designed to be one of the best HGs out of box, with most parts being made in Denmark and assembled here at our production facility in Ispagea. The Evo Scorpion still holds up to the demanding requirements that players put it through. After the initial release of the EVO 3A1, we released the carbine versions to accommodate the real steel version released by CC USA. With the ATEC, we wanted to continue the tradition and bond that ASG has with the real firearms industry. 
Introducing the Advanced Tactical Ergonomics Kit for the EVO Scorpion. With the ATEC, we wanted the concept to come from our desire to rethink the original design of the EVO, but still develop something that had ties to real-world application. Even though it's only released as an airsoft add-on, we still wanted that realism and feel of a one-to-one -one replica like with the EVO 3A1. We got in touch with a known weapons designer who, for now, shall remain anonymous. He helped bridge that gap between design and functionality. A lot of the things that ATEC offers isn't new in terms of function and design, but we wanted to not implement stuff just for the sake of it. We wanted that authentic thought process that goes behind a real weapon system to keep the legacy of the EVO intact. It's been a long run getting the parts designed at the production up to spec. The nylon glass fiber that we use for the ATEC is the same durable blend that we use for the EVO. The ATEC handguard installs the same way as the original handguard. You simply replace the original front with the ATEC. The angled front grip installs just like any other front grip, so pretty easy. With the magwell, we wanted it to be able to be installed on most EVOs regardless of the handguard. So we designed a clamshell system that goes together from each side using hex screws. This allows for an easy and fast installation across multiple handguard configurations. There are two versions when it comes to the Magwell. Version 1 being mid-cap and version 2 being for high-cap magazines since the high-cap magazine has a more bulky body. With the ATEC handguard, we wanted the look and feel of the original 3A1 handguard, so we kept the base design as the platform to develop from. We started by removing the Picatinny rails on the sides to keep it more streamlined with more smooth contours. We replaced the rails with M-Lock slots, which has become an industry standard for a modular rail system. With the addition of small textured nubs on both sides, the user has a better grip during wet play and with gloves. The crux of the handguard is the top front end, which has been redesigned to feature an angled handstop. This allows the user to consistently get that right grip. This feature works with the angled front grip, which also has a handstop at the bottom, so both your thumb and index finger are securing an optimal apex of your hand and wrist. With the angled front grip, your palm gets seated a lot better, which ensures prolonged use to be less of a strain while having better weapon control and manipulation. The ATEC Magwell doesn't only improve your reload speed, it also provides a larger surface to the front for better control. With the serrations in the front and textured nubs on the sides at key points, the handling and manipulation of the EVO is greatly improved. All these things might seem like minor features, and separately, they are. But if you combine them all as a complete kit, you'll see improved ergonomics and manipulation to an already great AEG. The ATEC kit is going to come in two different versions, a mid-cap and a high-cap. We're also going to release each individual part so you can configure your EVO after your needs. There are a lot of things you got to consider when playing airsoft. What gear, weapon, propulsion, BBs, everything. You want to get that competitive edge in every point you can. With the Evo ATEC, you get that. Don't fall short on your next airsoft game. Stock up your airsoft supplies at Patrol Base and enjoy our generous bulk buy discounts. Shop now. This is Billy. Billy wants to buy a new airsoft gun. He seems to have his eye on the Tokyo Marui Scar L. Is that right? But Billy's seen the price. Is that a bit out of your price range, Billy? Well, not to worry, because Patrol Base has many finance options available. From interest-free finance to buy now, pay later, we can find an option right for you. In store, our staff can talk you through the options, and using our handy portal, you can fill out all the details needed. If you can't make it to our store, you can take advantage of all of our finance options online. 
simply complete your basket and in the payment options, select the finance option that best suits you. If you're having any trouble, our helpful customer service staff are just a phone call away. So what are you waiting for? Visit Patrol Base today. For full terms and conditions, please visit patrolbase.co.uk forward slash Klarna hyphen payments. In the future, justice is not served. Evil crime boss, urban mafioso Don DeVito controls an evil army of robots. He even controls an alien, an alien. But forged in Castle Grayskull comes a weapon from the future, giving you, the user, the ultimate justice power to serve to protect those in need. Introducing the Shadow Team. My daddy didn't teach me nothing about much. But he told me that your AEG is either working hard or hardly working. With our wide range of AEG replacement and upgrade parts, you can give your AEG the TLC it deserves. You would have made daddy proud. Ladies and gents, I'm Stuart from Patrol Base. I'm Pete, and this is Mike. We're from Patrol Base. Hi, I'm Sam from Patrol Base.
Hello and welcome back. So we are in for part two of our podcast with Will Greenwood. We've real refilled his coffee and uh, <laughs> he's fueled up and ready to go. Uh, this second part is going to be more focused on AC products uh, like the Evo, maybe what's coming, things that we've done in the past, uh, rather than just uh, a, a general chit chat of airsoft as a whole. But we can't have an ASG chat without mentioning what is and probably was, is, still is the flagship, and there's one behind Will, uh, yeah, the yeah. Evo itself. Um, when that thing came out, it was leaps and bounds. It was revolutionary. The The yeah. tech that was in that for the price you were paying for it mm. was... Stock as Silly, well. and 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 just out, like not having to that, that whole thing of everyone wanting to buy something and go, how do I upgrade it? The yeah, idea yeah. of the Evo was you don't, you don't, no. you don't. Um, and I mean, how old's the Evo now? God, uh, six years, six, six seven years, years yeah, yeah. Wow, uh, it's madness. Isn't it? Still, still holding its own in its various reincarnations that it's had. I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. so the original Evo, uh, I mean, that's obviously not an original Evo. No. Um, so I think what was the first upgrade to the upgrade was the uh, the Gen Two. I think they had the um, was it the roller bearing spring guide was the first yeah, thing that they yeah. changed. Yeah, yeah which shows so. that when things were going wrong, <clears throat> that it it was addressed and sorted, and mm. things take time. And and this is what players probably need to understand that oh, this is wrong fix it it says well you've still got to have it made yeah you've yeah, got to yeah. design it and the design and stuff that went behind the evo is obviously the danish way of doing it is to do it right and properly and and and, and tick all the boxes so it was showing that they were changing it and then um we we had like the bet and the 2020 rev, um redo and all the different variants mm. but uh do you, you run an evo now yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. Um, <laughs> High rate of fire. <laughs> yeah, the rate like of fire. I, said, I, like, I mean, you've you've changed one to the eleven one. I mean, yeah, guys yeah. in Europe and and they just run them out the box mm. as that. Whereas over here, we have to just tweak it slightly. Um, I mean, I've always said, if if someone comes in the shop and says, "What is what is the best gun on the wall?" You can always tell them. But the problem is, I've always had that thing of if you don't like the look of something, oh, I'll yeah. use it. And yeah. that's my thing with that. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, I don't like the look of it, but <laughs> it, it shoots for my Yeah, it's just really problem. good. It's just um, uh, it's just a weird looking thing because you know people are like, oh, I don't want an M4. Yes. I want so it looks a bit different, or yeah. you know, you give them that, or like a, a smaller SMG, um, a younger player because yeah, it's all polymer. The size of it. Yeah, it's I all think polymer. the main thing that I always, especially with new players <clears> and getting into it, and the main thing with un, like under 18s and full face masks is it has that drop down stock. Yeah. So someone with an M4 and trying to get down on it and stuff like that, you have to do all this. It's a little bit like other platforms. That drop down stock is almost like a riser for optics. Oh yes, yeah. It, it adds to it. So there's there's loads of features on it that you wouldn't really count as features, but mm. actually do make it better. Um, I think we are actually rolling in a load more uh, questions already. Ooh. We're getting them already. Nice. So we've got some more questions coming in. So we'll answer them before we get too deep into the ASG. Uh, Andrew on uh, Facebook: Does ASG make tuning parts for the Evo Three SMG? So yes, yes. Um, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, we, so, you do. So I think it is. It is at the end of the day, it is just an AEG. Yes. Um, so it still has gears. It still has a piston. So ASG's parts sort of range is vast. Very, um, yeah, very much so. So I mean, you you do springs, motors, everything. Gears, right? yeah, pretty so, much anything that goes in inside of an Evo. Inside of an Evo, or a version two AG box, yeah. or anything like that. So. Is there anything that you'd obviously you were on about previously with the the mods that you've done the gears of the you've swapped to a different range of ASG gears mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. is there anything else that you'd recommend or maybe not recommend because it works perfectly fine out yeah. of the box but yeah. is there anything that you'd <clears throat> want to do further to yours with ASG parts maybe so with mine um, I put a upgraded boost motor into it um, which means just increases the trigger response for yeah. me because the Trigger MOSFET's fantastic. I'm pretty sure it paved the way for stock guns having a trigger MOSFET. Yeah. Because they were like, oh, this gun comes with this stock. Let's start innovating and creating the game. Yeah, it's, good. It's, it's, it's that I've, I've said it a few times, especially to new players and stuff. I mean, I'm not going to say how many years ago it was because it'll give away certain aspects <laughs> of my life that 
when I started, MOSFETs weren't a thing. Yeah. If you wanted a MOSFET, people were building their own. They were soldering them themselves in the middle of, in the middle yeah, of a, yeah. a safe zone going, oh, my, my, whatever, this, my Tron, or this, that, and the other. <laughs> and all they were trying to do was protect the batteries and, and change the trigger response. Mm. Now that the Evo has been around and is it almost got to that point now where they just have to stamp MOSFET on a box and it makes it better, regardless yeah, of what it does. No, I mean, right. the, the, the MOSFET in that does everything. It does the, the, the bolt stop, the protection, everything yeah, like that. Yeah. Whereas all you would have to do now on a, an AEG is put a battery protector. Oh, it says MOSFET, the, yeah. but you've got the same word. So yeah, which is better. Exactly. Um, but yeah, you can see MOSFETs becoming a standard. And I was mentioning it before the break. Uh, so the brushless motors and the new internal yeah. motors that yeah. are going to take away the pistol grip motors and everything like that. I think I think that stage now, what the Systema have done with the Infinity gearbox. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. I think that is, that's now MOSFETs 20 years ago. Yeah. So I think in the next three, four years, it's going to be the same thing, whether or not it's of a quality. If it says brushless motor on a box, it's going to be better, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You, and it's, it's the same with the Evo. The Evo staged that path for it has a really good MOSFET in it but they did change the market um, but do you think there's any anything else they're going to do with that tech or what they'd want to do with that tech because they've, they've got the golden child there that I mean put that in an M4 and I'd buy it <laughs> well <laughs> um, I, can't I know the really... whole thing the whole yeah. thing was it's not an M4 yeah. yeah but if you put it in an M4 I'd definitely buy it I <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I think on this, there, I, I can't really go into any no, details. No, yeah, but I, totally all I do know is that ASG have a vast amount of technicians and engineers, and uh, something could be on the cards. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. Strong, maybe. <laughs> strong, strong, maybe. <laughs> Heard it first. <laughs> um, so we've got some more questions coming in. So we'll drop some more questions up. Uh, Kieran on YouTube. What? Oh, there we go. What is next for ASG in the Evo <laughs> range? PS, love the Evo. Uh, so I think he's, he, we've just covered that. There is. Um, yeah. I think the Evo still has a massive amount of life left in it. So it's it's one of them that you're probably not going to sideline something that's doing so well. Uh, see, the one thing I like quite well with ASG, and you can probably notice or say the same, is if we have a licensed product. We have been selling it since the licensed product came. We don't discontinue a licensed product. Yeah. And the reason behind that is because our thought process is if we make something good enough for the first time, there's always going to be new players to the market who've seen this for the first time. Yes. Because with Airsoft growing, you're going to get more and more. You're more going to get more and more. And if we, we've heavily invested into our licenses, and we also work very closely with the real firearms companies. And we talk back and forth, and yeah. they like what we do. So why don't we represent it in the correct way? Do you know? And that's what we not, do. Not build it, get it out. And then get rid of it. And get rid of it because yeah. there's always there's always new eyes, there's always new players. Yeah. It's, um, so like, it's like, I don't know, for example, the, 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 uh, the PO9. Years. Yeah. The Shadow 1. Do you know, that's still kicking about. Like, even though the Shadow yeah. 2 has come out, people still like the Shadow 1. It's still going, it's still flying. Do you know, it's something that we're quite good at. We're very good at keeping the product alive. And keeping it honest to its license very, as well. Very much yeah. so. Very much so. I mean... We'll go on to like the Evo event and stuff like that, and like the the, the things that were that happened with the Evo, like the HB stuff, the Yeti yeah, yeah, just so cool. How if you, you if if you have got that following and that license and that platform, you'll get all the other angles in. And the longer you have that license, the longer them tendrils go, yep. the more cool bits that you can get for it. Whereas yes. you get it out and it's gone, people start making these parts for it, and they're like, oh, the product's not there anymore. Yes, it's, it's exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we've got another question coming in, thick and fast. Uh, George on Facebook, considering all the issues with the CNC hop unit for the Evo, has ASG got anything uh, to say about their customers feeling shafted? Oh, I understand that. Uh, uh, I'm not aware of any problems with the CNC. So there wasn't any issues with the CNC. Mm. All it was is that we added an extra improvement. Right. So it works perfectly fine. And I wouldn't say they get shafted. It was all, uh, there was, I don't want to go into details, but yeah. we made another one soon after, we just made it a little bit better. Ah, right. So, so one came out and yep. it was, it was all right. And then a version two came out a little bit too quick, yes. maybe. Yes. And it, people it was. thought it was like, what, oh, was this one not finished? Or, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Very, very much so. But I wouldn't say anyone got shafted because it still works. Right. And if you had 
either you, if you think you're competent yourself to install it or someone else can install it, it works. Do you know, um, the reason I know that is because I have one in mine. Yeah. And then mine's the first one. I didn't, I haven't bought the second one. You've still got the I've map, still got the, the first one. one or, I've still, yeah, I've still yeah. got the one that they say doesn't work, which actually works a lot better than the standard one. Yeah. Then that, that's my point. I'm sorry if you feel like you've been shafted. Um, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that in a, a, a few products is you get that first production run and again, various things can happen like factories change yeah, or yeah. manufacturer processes change, even just the inability of like all the shims or something like that. Yep. If, if just a bit of plastic gets a change because you get it made somewhere else in the second batch yes. and it's just one of them things that it's not a deliberate, it's just, it's a production thing. It, well, it, it happens it, it, all the time. It, see, it wasn't even that. It was... Um, kind of a how do we make it better because it still works yeah. it still works fine it's just that fine tuning thing isn't it you know it, it works but it can work better and why not release something that, that all of a sudden you've had a eureka moment and well, you just want to change it and do it, it rather, than, rather yeah. than bleed it out and get more money out of that original of course, one of course, we'll just, we'll just reinvent it now and get it done and it, get the better product exactly out. exactly and, but yeah again I still use the original because it works And because it, it works yeah yeah it's good I think it's the same with mine I've um the <coughs> Odin, like the speed loader. Yeah, yeah. The day they came out, I, love I, bought, them. I the day they came out, I bought one. They didn't come with like the rubber sealer. Out. Went to the states, bought one of the rubber seals, and I've still got that same one from the day they came out. <laughs> Me too. And I think there's one one spine left on my wheel. <laughs> but it's, again, it still, it still works. Goes. So I'm not going to spend yeah, another I, fifty quid on I've, a new I've one. I've still got one until well. mine actually breaks. That's when I'll replace yeah, it's, it. It's the, always... the original one that doesn't have the dampener, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I had to buy that. Yeah. <laughs> you have to split it apart and do it. But yeah, I think there's one spine left inside, but it still works, so I'll still use it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got further questions coming in online, so we'll get them up. Uh, another question from YouTube. Are you planning to release any more HPA engines of the AEGs? Uh, so I think, obviously, the Evo got its HPA. Yep. Um, I think this is... It's probably an easier thing to HPA the Evo because it is produced mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, the first AEG to be produced in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas the other uh, licensed stuff, it's produced elsewhere. So to HPA, say the Hero Arms, would be a bit, it'd be a tough. bit, of a, it'd be a tough thing to do. And very well, considering the whole build itself would yeah. be tough. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, is like, do you think there's any HPA ASG HPA? projects maybe not projects but obviously if you have access to the hpa stuff and you can put it in the evo is it available is would it be possible to be available separately i think that might be what they're on about okay so like a separate unit for, yeah so i can help you out straight away from that because it's wolverine yeah we work very closely with wolverine it's the gen inferno you know, i think it's a gen 2 inferno mm. just get yourself a gen 2 inferno a competent hpa tech and you can work with it but if you mean on the part of asg releasing more hpa guns I don't know, but what I do know is that we work quite closely with a, well, a few companies that do HPA, and it, I'd never say we never wouldn't. Say never. I'd never say never. Yeah. yeah. Any project is possible at some point. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if it's on the cards and we see there's, uh, it's worth it or it's cool, yeah. we'd look into it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, it's one of the only ones that, I mean, I've had HPA before, um, and having a pre built, pre done HPA thing. It's quite cool. Yeah. It, it is good. It's like the MTW. I, I love I've, it. I've said, I've said, if anyone, if you, if you're not overly competent or you're a bit worried about teching and stuff like that, look at the MTW. I really like the MTW. Boom, by, I mean, I really, it really, it's so quiet. It, it's well, it's becoming one of them things that we're noticing rapidly. I mean, I do think it has its ups and downs, but mm -hmm. I think um, proving grounds, the last proving grounds, uh, hundred and thirty, however many players, I think thirty percent of our field is HPA now. Wow, but I think that might be slightly biased because we do fills, we do air fills, so okay. it gives a little thing like well, that's that. That's cool. But I do think that brings that, them in. That is the the access to HPA, and as long as people, there's some people that are going to not like stuff because they've seen certain things, mm -hmm. like the rate of fire, and and they'll watch this one video and get a, an opinion. It's on the it. stigma behind it, yeah. isn't it? It's because and it's, of it's the, the old same school. thing with people talking about headshots and stuff like that. Yeah. There is yep. there is an argument on both sides, and you've got to be candid with both sides. Yes, it's possible to do that. Just don't. Yeah. Uh, and, don't, and then, yeah. and then, both sides of it is don't think because someone has that platform, they're going to be that person. Never assume. Yeah. Ne never. It's never. The same with gear. Oh yeah. It's the same with gear. You see someone dripping in gear, and you're like, oh, it's oh one of them yeah. Like, don't no, paint everyone not. with the same brush. Yeah, yeah, of course. But that's unfortunately 
just human nature. It yeah. happens in everything, not just yeah. airsoft. So. Yeah. I think people realize, like, once if you've been around a few hobbies, most of them have a carbon copy of the type of people yes, that are in them. very much so. Um, and everyone has an opinion. Not every <laughs> everyone opinion. has no, an opinion. everyone has an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> everyone. Most, most of them aren't correct. <laughs> and that's why they're an opinion, not a fact. Um, we've got more questions coming in, so we'll drop some more questions up. Lovely. Uh, Sam on Facebook, uh, can you explain all the premium retailer stuff? So what's a premium retailer? Right. Okay. So a premium retailer is one of our stores that supply a lot of ASG stuff, a lot of items, and also have a designated um, place in the store where you have a section put out where you can walk in and there's an entire area of ASG. And it's, it's so uh, rather than it being mixed in with like the F4s everything else. and SMGs, it's like, right, everything ASG is just yeah, here. Yeah, everything's just there. And it's usually the people who, um, like, what was the word? They put that commitment in and we give a commitment back as well. And that, that's the best way of sharing it. And the best way to see it is to look for the logo. You know, you have a gold ASG logo on their web page, mm -hmm. on the website, and that's how you know. They're usually ones that can help you quite a lot with spare parts, being able to get things in, having a majority of stock, because mm -hmm. that's also one of the things as well, is, is that you come under the premium retailer and it's becoming a premium dealer. So one thing I do say is anyone looking out there wants to look for a premium dealer, we actually have on actionsportgames.com a dealer locator map. So if you want to know where you are, it shows actually every dealer in the UK. And obviously if you want to look for a premium dealer, um, yourselves are a premium dealer mm -hmm. and then you've got other ones in the country as well and you can look for it so <laughs> there you go so it's basically like a, a, a almost like a, a santa's grotto for asg yeah yeah very much so yeah. yeah very so much so you want, you want <laughs> santa's that, grotto yeah. so you, you create all the the, the ambience around it and yes. you've got if you go oh i've heard about asg what what have they got to offer and it gives you everything rather than the evo being over there yeah the m40 being over there yeah, very the much so. being over there it's all there and there yes um, so we've oh they're coming in they're Ooh. coming in faster than we can do them so we've got more questions coming in. Uh, Joe on YouTube, uh, what upgrades are, uh, what upgrades are needed to the 2020 Evo to safely run 11 one? I think we spoke about this, didn't we? Um, I think the the if uh, we spoke about short stroking a little bit on our uh, workshop podcast. Um, so if you go back to that, it's literally just. Um, making sure the gears don't turn faster than the piston yes. can go forward. Yes. This is all caused by our spring the springs that create our power limits aren't strong enough to push the piston forward fast enough that the gears don't come around. Yes. Um causes pre engagement. So from my point of view, the the short answer is short stroke it. Yep. Spring bearing guide. Spring bearing guide yep. helps. Yep. Yep. Um because obviously it pushes the spring further the forward. Piston if you head, can isn't it? compress the spring a bit more, it gets a little bit more forward, forward motion. Piston head, but <clears throat> best thing to do. Um, they had ASG certified techs yep. uh, a while back. Obviously with COVID and stuff, they probably haven't been able to upgrade, uh, update as much as possible. But speak to any ASG certified techs, email our um, workshop, and I presume they'll be able to help. Yep, definitely. Um, I presume there's ways to access it on other places like ASG's yeah, website. So if, They'll if probably you go be giving you advice games, or anything like that. Yeah. They'll be able to sort it out there. On the dealer locator. Dealer locator, yeah, yeah, anything yeah. like that. Uh, they're coming in more. We're getting more questions <laughs> in, so we'll, we'll keep throwing these up until they go, run out. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Ian on YouTube. Uh, just bought the Hera Arms uh, nice. CQR uh, right. from PB. Good choice. Nice. Uh, any other collaborations in the pipeline? The CQBR is awesome out the box. Right. So, <laughs> my take on the CQR... It. It's a brilliant platform, Yep. but my hands don't work with it. Yep. So because the selector's on that far side, as soon as I go all the way around, I can't put it in full auto. No, because of so this, you can't push it because your thumb. Because of the way it is. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, ICS split gearbox and the, the triple S system or whichever one that it is now, the, the precock. And the, mm. the tech that's in that is, if the Evo wasn't out, it'd be... It'd oh be God, it's nice, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's thing, it's just, again, it's that bread and butter thing. It's not... It is an M4, but it's not an M4. It's got that difference to it. Mm. Um, but yeah, anything, anything? Uh, <laughs> putting me right on the spot here. Um, there are things to come, but I can't talk about it. Okay? It's exciting. It is good. But I can't say anymore. There you go. Yeah. Be patient. <laughs> Be patient. Be patient. <laughs> the, the, the Danes want to do things properly. 
Yes. And they want things to tick every box. So they don't want to start leaking bits out and then it take a bit longer because they find a problem. We don't want to get anyone's hopes up Yes. as well. And then it, basically it's managing expectation, isn't it? So. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you see someone claim something at Shot Show and then you don't see it for three years? <sighs> every Where, time. So <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's sort of a, a headache quasher for yourselves yeah, going oh yeah. where's that thing you promised where's that thing you promised yeah. if you're wanting to make something right yeah. you've got to if, you, if you're going through this thing oh we're nearly there we're nearly there oh we've got this now we'll go back a bit yeah. and, it, and it stops that whole thing of having to then go back and say oh sorry we've delayed it we've delayed it because mm. it's like with computer games isn't it oh we're delaying it a month oh well, yeah because you want to go to the opening oh, don't you you, you know, want to do always, this whereas yeah. with, with manufacturing that delay will it's a lot more of a process very much so doing things like that mm. Um, so, my light's not turned on, so we can talk about some other stuff. Um, <laughs> so, we're, with the Evo as well, uh, I think we were lucky enough going back, way, way back to 2017. Mm-hmm. I think this is even before yourself was at ASG. Yep, right, yep. Uh, we did the first Evo event. Um, I think the, the, the sort of subculture and um, following that the Evo grew was probably... It's never been seen in Airsoft, and I don't think it'll get seen again. No way. I don't no think that... Way. I think that that sort of... I'm not going to call it a blip, because it was many years. Yeah, it was a yeah. long time that yeah. that was a thing. Um, it still probably has that following. It's not quite as vocal as it used to be. No, it used to um, be everywhere. But I think that Evo event was a very... It was weird to organise. Mm-hmm. It was weird to run because mm-hmm. normally, if you're at an airsoft game and you've got all these rifles shooting off and and doing all this bits and bats, but when every single rifle on the field sounds the same, <laughs> that was weird. Very it was surreal. very surreal. Yeah, yeah. But I can't even remember. It was like 250, 260 players yeah. all running evos, <laughs> the same, exactly the same gun, uh, all running the Madness, same things. Madness, isn't it? Um, for guys that are new to the sport, uh, this is going back 2017. Um, a member of ASG came to us and said, "Oh, can can we do this?" And we just said, "Yes, yeah, we can do that." Um, and we pumped out a lot of stuff. We re- we reached out to a lot of American um, firearms companies and got loads of bits and yep. gave a lot of stuff away. Yeah, guys yeah. came from Ireland. Guys came from Denmark. Got everywhere. Um, yeah, Kenneth came from Denmark and all his. Uh, Jesper group. was there, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. All like, and it was. I think it was about two hundred and fifty players, all running Evos, <laughs> on one site. And it was weird. Um, <laughs> and it was and it was it weird. It was weird because normally, <laughs> normally when you when you marshal in sight or you're going around, you can kind of the, you know who the, shot something. You, you you get used to even in a short period of time, you get used to the shot reports of where things are. But when everyone's firing the same thing, it throws you off. Oh god, yeah. And and you've got all these like like people in full art. You've got the HPA ones. You've got these ones. But yeah, that was um, an interesting day. Uh, loads of prizes. I can't believe the prize pool that we gave out. Yeah. Um, do you reckon we could do another one? Yeah. Do you reckon? Do you reckon? Would people want another Evo event now that everything's unlocking, like we we're saying? Well, there we go. I think the one thing we have to do is do the research and talk together. I'm, from my understanding, we're perfectly happy to do another Evo event. Mm. But the one thing we need to make it like a lot of people think that ASG runs it, mm. not because what we are, we we support the stores, the, yes. the premium dealers, we support them in running a, an event. Yes. And so, whoever, if you want to run, want, run one, if you want to run one, I'm just going to put this well, to you now. I'll, I'll ask them. You know, well, yeah. if you want to see... Do you want another Evo event? If you want to see yeah, another we'll Evo we'll event... We'll put a poll up. Yeah. And, and put, we'll see. And, that, poll and, it goes, yeah. and it goes up with that thing of um, people have had that rest, people have had that yeah. break. Yeah. Uh, is it time? Um, it. I think it will... It'd be quite cool. It'd be good. It's either that or is it just um, an ASG event or something like that? Anything like that. There's loads of cool yeah, there was a, there was speculation of Evos versus, versus everyone. Yes. So like um, all the Evo players going against people with just their normal guns and battling it out. Could be interesting. Could be. Yeah. Unless unless you did it as uh, the different Evos versus each other. You so could, the SMG you versus could. the Brent <laughs> You could if you wanted the, to. the Carbine. And well, yeah. Just like, oh, uh, I've got a long one. Mine's you, better than yours. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah. Uh, so we've got some more questions dropping in. We've got another question dropping in now. Uh, Sam, uh, is that a USW on the wall behind you? Good spot. So oh, this yeah, nice is. Spot. Uh, Ooh, am I long? Enough? Yeah, no. Yeah. You, so this is the the newest. How do I? Is it the newest? Uh, n- There's nothing new, newest since, pistol, apart from the optic ready. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so, so yeah, but this is the newest new model, not, yes, not updated not a, model. Not, a, not an update, but yeah, trying to make platform it sort of seem on better. Its own, um, right. USW, so. No, I think that was better. Yeah. yeah. So, so there. where did this come from? What was the thought process behind this becoming an Airsoft product? So one thing that makes this quite unique here is there's not a lot of guns that have a optic ready rail on the top that you can use anything with a picatinny yes. usually it comes with an rmr cut. the rmr mount yeah or... so you're usually kind of get put down to only one or two sites yeah this i know it sounds really weird but you could have a, a a long red dot scope you could have you could have anything that could go onto a picatinny yeah so it works well, like even, even the t1 even the, yeah you could put a t1, t1 on, on it you know which, you could... which you can't put on a standard rmr mount you have to adapt yeah. it because but... Yeah. It gives you options, doesn't it? Yeah, very much so. And we, we work very closely with B&T. Um, obviously, we did our MP9. Yeah. We worked very close to them. We did the um, GL06 launcher. And this is just one of the most unique ones. And also, it's used quite heavily in uh, police and uh, firearms. Oh, so real steel-wise. Yeah, real, it's, real it's, steel-wise. It's a law enforcement platform. Yeah. It's not just... Um, What's the word for it? It's not just a firearm for being a firearm. It's someone's made. Yeah. It, it, it has been spec'd or exactly. requested. It's not like, so, for example, the Shadow 2 is for competition shooting. Yes. Yeah, this is used for law enforcement. Yeah. And there are kits out there that kind of look a bit like it, but I don't think do as good as job. Mm. And the reason behind that is because of the, well, the rubberized grip at the back, I think, is a great feature with it. Yeah. It shoots unbelievably. Cause it's, it's snappy. It's the, the, only thing, the only thing when that first came out, I went, why is it not got full or? See, but the again, real one doesn't have a lot. Yeah, the it's, real it's one. Always that, it's always that That's the attention to detail yeah. we like to stay with it. And with it being airsoft, it's probably not hard to it's not. change that. It's not, no. It, <laughs> no. But, <laughs> as soon as it came out, I was like, oh, this is, this is so close to being airsoft. But yeah, the one thing I like as well is the um, it does come now with a 50-round magazine. Yeah. Like, it doesn't come with it as standard, but you can buy one, can them, yeah. which is nice because the one annoying thing I find, if you use a, um, a pistol as a primary, you run out of ammo. Yeah. And if you get like two or three of those, you could easily run around and oh, be yeah, comfortable yeah, yeah. in the secret. I mean, inside. I've always had the, uh, Very much there's so. the, um, the Rafika. So yeah. kind of a similar thing. You have but, a little feel. No. Uh, <laughs> a, very, a very similar thing. I've always wanted the Rafika and just run 10 max. Yeah. And it's a similar thing. It's that possible primary that you can have with it. Um, and what they did with this as well is it didn't just come out on its own. It had the other bits with it. So yeah. the holster came out. The Obviously, it comes with CO2 max. And... Which is it? The CO? Which one is it that the mags are? It's the same mag as something else, isn't it? The Shadow Two. That's Shadow yeah, the two, same yeah. Shadow Two mags. So yeah. it, you weren't having to redesign the wheel. Well, the, the, co- has... the cool thing is, if you own a Shadow Two, all of your mags will work in this. It just works. Well, just flips over. I've got a friend called Callum, and he literally said that to me the other day when we, you know, we went to we went had a, a couple of pints together. We just he spoke to me. He was like, you know what I loved about the USW. I've got eight mags for the Shadow 2, yeah. and I didn't have to buy a single mag, <laughs> so I just put it in. But yeah, so yeah. for those that haven't seen this before, if, if um, so what usually happens a problem with platforms like this is uh, finding holsters for them. Yep. It can be a nightmare when something's so proprietary and different. Oh, God, yeah. It's either you're stuck with a fabric one, which it's, it, it's heavy, around. so it's, it's probably going to fall out. Um, so what they did is the the front rail here, you get a bit that goes on the front and it retention and clicks in. That's the bit that then clicks in. It means that it's then retention. You could just grab and go. And the bit on the back here that I'm just pressing there, that is the spring-loaded. Um, everyone thinks that's a button. Like, What's this do? Is it really? No. That's what whips your stock out. So when you pull this out, you press it and it I love just goes. It. Yeah. Um, it is a cool bit of kit um, and can just go away like yeah, that. Yeah, show a little demonstration. So it there you go. Out, it's when you, you can bring it out. So when and, and when you're drawing it as well, your fingers in that point as well. Exactly. Um, so it's almost like uh, ASG have that. They have. They, they've they've focused on pistols. They're focused on the SMGs. They've got they've they've fingers in every pie is not the right word. It's when they concentrate on something. So like the pistol range. You've got the CZ, the Shadow, and everything like that. The, it's almost like the drive is all behind that. Once that's oh, out yeah. and done, it's then right. Here's the Hera. Oh, very, this is very, the focus, and it's very and it's, much so. It's it's a very narrow path until this is out. Um, it's not here yet, but the stair scout is. On oh yeah, way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so again, the the the, the 
features that are coming out for it, not features, but the um, material that's coming out for it, uh, we've been provided with a video. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we throw the video up for the Stier, uh, and we can go over some of its features as well. Oh. Uh, so we, this is the new sniper rifle from ASG, the Stier Scout. Um, not my cup of tea. No? No, but no. From what I've heard, internally, this thing's going to be savage. It's going to be great. Uh, uh, also, you know, if there's any CSGO fans out here who play yes, well Counter-Strike, yeah. It's come from. So, it's 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 been compared and contrasted to all the modified snipers, which yep. are... Um, they have, again, they're following. They are the Ferrari, the Lambo, or whatever you want to call it, of the sniper world. Yes, the and, upgrade and, parts. And, yeah. and this is a pre-upgraded... One of not one of them, but them parts in it. But it's got a larger, is it a, a larger cylinder volume? Yes. Than yeah, yeah. the modify by quite a considerable amount. Um, that helps with it keeping it quiet, mm -hmm. um, consistency out the thing, out the uh, the the muzzle. This thing's meant to be shooting about four hundred and fifty fps on a point two yep. out the box, which is great for something that is actually quite small. Yeah, very uh, much so. This thing's like. So normally you expect 120, 130 centimetres for a sniper. Yeah. And all that. This is about a meter, just under a metre or a metre long. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for something that is to be a scout, uh, a recon sniper, if you're... So I've tried sniping before, and yeah. my problem is is I'm like a dog seeing a squirrel. If I see another player, <sighs> I'll go for him. Me too. And yeah. being a sniper, that doesn't really You know, matter. you have to sit and wait. So I always <laughs> had to have a Mac 10 as a backup. So... <laughs> So it was it was called the panic button. So straight got, to full auto. Yeah, so straight on to full auto, get rid of them. Um, because I ended up too close. And, and yeah. normally with snipers, I could take out one mag and I won't go through it because I'm that close, it'll be with a pistol or a... Of course. The scout sniper is, I'm there to be the eyes and ears of the rest of the team. Yes. And I think this is going to be that. Well, it's just light. That platform, it's going to be light. You move it around. You don't have to put it in for the, the bipod. It's got that built-in thing. Mm. Um and I think he try he uses it as a brace at one point as well. So you can yeah, drop you it can. down. You, you don't have to drop both sides down, you can use it as a brace. It's got the rail on it already. Um metal piston, I'm just checking my notes in front of it. So I do <laughs> get it right because it is brand new, so I don't want to get any of these bits wrong. Um the the massive oversized uh, cylinder, so this thing is gonna be quiet. Uh it's got Q D points for slings. Yep. yep. Um but yeah, uh and I think it's straight forty mil counterclockwise, so all your yes. suppressors all your bits and bats. There's nothing proprietary about it. Uh, it uses um, magazines from something that's already out as well. Uh, was it the modified mags? Or I do believe it, there are modified uh, mags. That and can. then the bit at the yeah. back is it's separate mag yeah. that so still the, does work, but it's just part of the stock. Yes. yes. So that won't work in a modified, but it, the modified mag. Other way, other way around. Yeah. yeah. Um, hot booking. Just checking my notes as well. So this thing's been designed for three sixes and above. Yes. So it is. It's gonna it's gonna reach out because they've designed it around that throwing your your lower weight BBs in it. It's just gonna sky. Oh, it's gonna yeah. So you want in them heavy 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 weight BBs. It's gonna fly straight. It's gonna fly true and it's gonna be quiet and it's gonna be lightweight and it's gonna be really really cool. Yes. Paint it up, make it look cooler than it is, uh, and then you'll have some fun. Yeah yeah. Scrim it up and again, <laughs> it's like the Evo. It performs amazing. It's just if you don't like the look of it, it, it might not be your cup of tea. But if you get one in your hands, once you're in a game, yeah. you don't, you're not looking at that. Well, anyway, no, you're so. not. You, you know, you, you're scouting the field. You're yeah. just playing airsoft, aren't and, you? And if you, you're looking for that bit, that that thing is that the best in its brand. Yeah. Once it turns up, we again those that join us every day, we will be doing a live stream on it. So as soon as one hits us, we'll we'll do a live stream on it and we'll we'll check it out. But we have got more questions coming in already. Fantastic. So we've got some more questions popping up. Joe on YouTube. Uh, any chance of patrol base doing the Evo A1K oh, again? Oh, yeah. That. So again, it's because we mentioned <laughs> the Evo. Event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Old school. So again, for those that don't know what that was, we, um, as part of the Evo event, we created the um, monstrosity. The Evo K. <laughs> a monstro oh, there's the monster <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that won't be mentioned. <laughs> so we created the Evo K, so Kurtz for short. Um, so HB Industries in the States made yeah. very, very cool M-Lock rails. It's gorgeous. That were almost like laser blaster style yeah. uh, aesthetic, and it was it was tiny. It was um, very much PDW. We made them as a product. We got we, we built them up and put all the um, ASG parts, like the upgrade parts yeah. for the hop and everything like that. Um, hey, maybe if we do another event, we might build some more. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
uh, we'll mm-hmm. contact all them same people and, uh, and, and see what they want to say. Yeah. No promises. No, no, promise yeah. Can't promise anything. Not promise anything. <laughs> uh, so not really putting you on the spot because I know there's probably some stuff that you can say, some stuff oh, that you can't say. Go, yeah. But apart from the stayer, is there more stuff coming? Not what it is. I, I know you can't tell us what's coming or all that, but are we to get excited? Is 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 2021 going to be a good ASG year or are we waiting for 2022? 2021 is going to be good. Yeah. And 2022 is going to be good as well. Oh, I thought you were going to say it would be better. Oh, you missed a trick there. I'm not going to say better because <laughs> I still want to get excited for 2021. <laughs> no, um, no, but... Yeah, so it's it's that whole thing of ASG are very consistent with that, that brand. So they want to get the scout out. They want all the focus to be on that. Oh, very much so. And, and you don't want to give stuff away because then as soon as this is out, it's like, all oh, right, we're done. We're looking at that now. Well, that's it. And the one thing you know we spoke about earlier the whole mission for ASG is to do a good job for the real firearms yeah. company to make it to... You to don't rep- want to just get it out and, exactly. it and be like, oh, where's that Represent thing? it in a good light. Yeah. And also, buyer's retention. You know, if we, any of our licensed stuff that we've done, we don't just throw it away. Yeah. N- n- we keep it, we retain it, and we build it, and we show everyone how good and it is. And that's a good thing. It's that whole thing of, yes, the, the stayers are on the route, and, and with deliveries and stuff being slightly delayed, maybe we'll get a few to start with, then more and more and more. Don't worry, it is here to stay. Mm. So you're not going to miss out on it, is, is the kind of thing that I mean. Is yeah. There's there's a lot of products that come out and we go, oh, there's 50 of them. Uh, and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. Whereas if, if it turns up and it's gone, don't worry, it is here to stay. It's, it's going to be here for Very a much long, so. long time yeah. and you, you're not going to miss out. If you do want one, you will get one. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a great thing. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, we've got uh, my lights on, so Ooh. we've got more questions dropping in. So we'll we'll have to. Peter on Facebook plans uh, to stock the stay scout time frame to hit shops. Ah, okay. So the last I heard, it was on its way to you. Okay, so um, I'd say within two to three months, yep. you'll see it in people's hands. Yeah. Uh, and if you're wanting any information on it, we have been given the. Um, tech pack so uh, if people are wanting we could we could probably throw the one specs. of the, the specs yeah, up, yeah. the marketing pack because again uh, until we have it in hand we can't do a live stream on it yeah. so getting it out there but if you're wanting to know what is in it uh, let us know and we'll throw this tech pack up the big the blurb that you've given us uh, and everything about it obviously uh, this has come from that that counter strike back in the day um csgo yeah CSGO, real, real sorry. Good, yeah. i'm not a pc player <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there is there is way more stuff on them notes than I could go through. It'd be a stream in itself going through all the information. It'd be an individual that. stream, it's yeah. Just, but as, again, as soon as they're in our hands, we will do a stream on it. Uh, we'll do a comparison. We could even get the, the modify out and do that. The, the, That's a good idea. The, the um, airflow and everything on it because they are claiming that this thing is massive. Yeah. The cylinder inside here is massive. And obviously from that, the, I can guarantee the next question is what's going to be compatible with it. Mm-hmm. With it being a permanent part of ASG's range and ASG being what they are, parts will be available. Of course, It's yeah. not a case of this thing is going to come out, it's super pri- proprietary, it breaks nothing. Because ASG are a European company, it's easy to communicate with you. Parts are just going to be there, it's done, it's fine. We can replace bits. Uh, upgrade parts, again, it's pre-upgraded. There's there's nothing you need to do to it. But, um, I mean, it, it's not my cup of tea, but the, the spec is what gets me excited oh, with yeah. it. Is, Very, what it can do. Yes. Um, yeah. Because that always seems to be the thing with ASG, from my point of view. <laughs> it's, what's the most hipster gun we can find? <laughs> and we'll yeah. build that. Because it kind of advertises itself it's then. It's niche, isn't it's it? Niche, it's niche, it's different. You Breaking can drink the mold. Wee, yeah, you can drink it Do with you know? your slurpy ice frappuccino <laughs> and uh, and have a look at it. But we've got some more questions coming in before I get disappeared by coffee and stuff. Uh, Andrew on Facebook, uh, can you explain why ASG recommends an 11.1 battery, but we need to make changes not to break Evo 3, please? So from my point of view, again, a lot of these questions are coming at me, I think, now. I, I, I can explain it for you if you want, basically. It's, it's UK powers, though, isn't it? It's, at it's, the end of the day. It's... Not, it's Basically, the best way to put it is if you use an 11.1 in the stock, because of the spring being not as heavy, it will cause the rotation of gears and the piston to go too quickly and it will break the gears because yeah. it's designed for Danish 
um, Denmark, FPS, France, yeah, America, Sweden, all everywhere. the FPS F limits. Um, they don't technically actually have an FPS limit in Denmark. No, they no, don't no, actually I've, have I've an FPS limit. To a few limit. people, well, because obviously I was lucky enough to do. I've, I've managed to play in Denmark and play in France and play in the states. Yeah. And yep. our power limit is the lowest. Oh God, yeah. But if you, yeah, went, yeah. if I went out there, if I went online now and said we should lift, we should raise our power limits to X, Y, and Z, it'd be an uproar because of course, yeah. There's been this in, it's been institutionalized to be the safety, and if you go above it, it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Denmark, there's no power limit. They simply put oh. a medium engagement yeah. on your platform. Yep. Very easy in Denmark because it's quite a small community. Yes, it, and and not small game days, but a small community. Um, France is very similar, uh, but theirs is different. Germany is more powerful, but single fire. Auto. Yeah, There's single no fire. No full only. auto in Germany whatsoever. Mm. Uh, in the US, it's one point five five joules on a two five. Yeah, and that's your limit. So it's about four hundred and ten FPS. I think Ireland's the lowest. It's three hundred. Yeah, it's about it's on one, ju- one, one joule. One joule. Yeah, yeah. One joule. Um, but after playing in all these places and in the states as well, is obviously I went there as a, as a sort of big event at Milsim's type thing, but that's more of the style that the states is because yes. people travel for so oh, far. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Um, you had to buy a ticket for your platform, so you didn't get two hundred people with snipers or hundred people with. SMBs. Oh god, yeah, you had to allocate yourself. You have to allocate yourself. So yeah, yeah. what the, it's quite easy then to put rules in place for different platforms. So the mm. Evo is a genuine SMG. So if you run that under a jewel, you can full auto anywhere. Oh, yeah. So that's indoors, in this hold hospital, yeah. through a little gap. <laughs> <laughs> again, in the love handles, making me feel sick. Oh, God. But again, you're outdoors, LMGs, anything like that. Yeah. It's If you are can only full auto, they put medium engagements in. But, I mean, yourself playing indoors and stuff like that, 350 at point blank, it sucks. You know. But... <laughs> you know, I don't think it's dangerous. It's probably controversial no. to say, but I do think our power limits could go up. Could the, would 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 it be necessary? Because I noticed, especially playing in Denmark with the power limits that were over there. Yeah, like we were saying, our oh, woodland. I see someone I can't engage. Exactly. Yeah. In Denmark, there was a guy, however far away, with an Evo, and I went, "Oh, I'll put some rounds down to cover him and move forward." I fired these shots and he put his hand up. There you go. Because because you could reach because the power limits. The yeah. power limits. Uh, I'd say. So, because of marshalling a CQB site yeah. for a long time, but CQB, you could quite happily say 328, just 320, yeah. Okay, I agree with outdoors, that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only because I know that if you give people a, an inch, a, an inch they'll, yeah. they'll take a, a mile. But it's know? like the FPM, FPS limits now is 328 plus or minus 10, percent mm. which makes it 350. Yeah, people still chase that 350. Of course, and they it's do. Completely. If not you necessary. ask any technician in this country, right, what's the one thing they get asked? Can oh, I, can you can you can make my gun three four nine yeah. consistently? But I, I prefer uh, three three thirty. Yeah. always been. Yeah, I've always I've always had best results. It's deviance, three, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's chrono error. The five yeah. percent chrono error. You know. But every every platform I've built and it's sat at three thirty. I've just had better games days with it, more consistency. Yeah. Whereas you, it's not a finely tuned. Yeah, you're yeah. throwing it up to that three fifty. I've always tried to describe it as you remember the ten bob float of footballs when you were a kid. Yes. If you yeah. kick them nicely. They just float. If you oh, put your boot behind They come it, back. It goes, it goes, yeah, yeah. yeah, they come backwards. Yeah, I've always seen up. that as a very similar thing yeah. with Airsoft as well. Uh, so before we get too de- distracted by <laughs> footballs and childhood <laughs> dreams, uh, we've got more questions coming in. Uh, Jake on Facebook. Will ASG make a decent GBBR SMG or pistol? Define decent. Exactly. It's very subjective. It is, I think, uh, I think they, they kind of answered that question on Instagram a, a couple of weeks ago about yeah. the... They're never going to make an SMG uh, gas blowback Evo. Mm. As much as it would be awesome. Yeah. Um, they've already said that's a no, but... Um, as in... I presume that he means maybe... G- G- a GBB, SMG. A, a GBB, I think he means something a bit bigger. Than oh, like, a, like an a M4 rifle or, or something it. bigger, but the MP9's great. Yeah, MP9. Uh, the, again, yeah. the only thing I'm not a fan of is skeleton stocks. Mm. I'd prefer something that I can get a decent cheat weld on, yeah. but again, it's preference. If you like that thing, want to... One of our staff runs an MP9 and he absolutely loves it. Yeah, yeah. Um, super loud, super obnoxious, great in CQB. But is there anything? Is there anything that ASG make now that you'd like to see in gas that's not gas? Mm. And that's just personal preference, not, yeah, not what's yeah. coming or out like that. No, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to see a, a gas blowback Bren. Ooh, that imagine. Be- 
It'd be like it'd be like the sky, wouldn't yeah. it? It'd be super yeah, loud. It, it would it would be it would have a bolt and a half yeah. on it, wouldn't it? <laughs> and then <laughs> all the aftermarket be... companies would try making steel bolts for it. Yeah, it just... I think I think because of the you know the grey dual tone. Yeah, and how uh, really gunmetal it looks. Yeah. Really nice. I would love to see a gas blowback brand. Yeah, that would be. Nice. be... Yeah. I think the size of the bolt in that as well. It'd, it'd, <sighs> it would be a good. It'd kick. knock you around. Yeah, it'd be like the Scar H, wouldn't it? Yeah. Go on. Yeah, fancy that. <laughs> You've got me going now. Uh, so we've got another question dropping in. Uh, another question on YouTube. Working in the end airsoft industry, is there any chance of getting free gear? Uh, well, I can answer that, no. Not at all. Unfortunately, you actually seen, when you work in the community, you seem to support, you seem to actually support it more. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I don't get free gear. I, the whole thing of getting free gear is there has to be a purpose behind it. And from my point of view, free gear will always give you a bias. Oh, God, yeah. If you've paid for it, you will be honest about it. Of course you will, and, because you don't feel like be- you owe anyone anything. Way. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's that YouTube thing. Do people get in it trying to get this free gear? And nine times out of ten, if you're going to get something for free, it's probably not that good. Because oh, yeah. if something's good, they don't need to give it away. Yeah, it, it's already selling itself. It's already proven itself. Whereas, depends. I'd say mm. only because when something first comes out, mm. you know, I don't know if we're okay to speak about other brands here, but if I was to mention, you know, Crytac, mm. when it first came out, every YouTuber had it. Mm. What was the number one bought rifle at that time? Just, everything again, was everything. because it was new. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I think if it hadn't have been in all these YouTubers' hands, like you know, the jet. Yeah, Leah. Um, yeah, it was, it was in every, it, literally everyone's. But again, it was also a good platform. It was good. I agree. So once people had it, they went, "Oh, actually, this is good." I agree. If, but where yeah. is it now in the UK? Do you know? Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like they're they're, they're about. It's just that again, not it's, seen as much. It, yeah, like, they're that, not, um, not saying they're not good because they are good. They're very good platforms. They're also very good platforms to upgrade on. Yeah, but they're nowhere near as crazy as spoke about as it was. Yeah. Because they were, they were everywhere. Like, even on Facebook, yeah, whenever you went to a field, everyone was like, oh, this is a... Because the Lavoa, oh, man, that, yeah, yeah. yeah Again, it's that. That, it's that licensing. It was gorgeous. It, yeah, the yeah. front end of that Lavoa was really nice. Yeah, it's the, the wire cutter front end. Is, yeah. It's a bit of a... It's then a, everyone did it. Everyone went for that thing. And uh, the wire cutter as well, it was also in various other things at the time. So what I see as well is... Whatever is American Range Day trendy, yes. Is, oh God, is, yeah. Is the thing. yeah. So yeah, you'll yeah. get like the L, the new uh, like LVO style dot sights. Yeah. You'll see them all over the the um, the PO9, the Optic Ready, yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. The one that sort of reaches forward. That's the new trendy sight that all the pro shooters are using. So yeah, the Seymour, the, like Seymour the Seymour sight, sights yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And again, um, you'll get some stuff like that that is made popular by video games yes, um, yes. so like the LVOA was it was I think it was a COD weapon at the time it was on Ghost Ghost, Ghost Recon, yeah, Ghost and, Recon and Wildlands like that. Yeah, so yeah. anything that is available and in stuff like that it's 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 trendy yeah. for a very spike of time I forgot what game the Evo's on now it's a new game just come out oh is it the yeah. Evo was in Ghost Recon, definitely. No, no there's, a, there's a new game that's come out, and it's on, I forgot what it's called, unless I may have accidentally leaked something. But <laughs> never mind, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I think well, no, the, Evo, the Evo is coming to COD. Right, okay. I think it's coming oh, to Warzone, it? it's not okay. in it yet, but no. it might be. I think I've seen... Yeah, it was definitely in Ghost it, Recon, because yeah. you saw people all building it up and putting it yeah, on the, yeah, the Facebook yeah. group. I think it's coming to... Oh, no, it was in COD as a blueprint. Right. So you could get it in COD, you could pick it up and it had a drum mag and everything on it. Oh, man. Yeah, it's definitely been in Warzone. Cool. Yeah, 100%. Okay, cool. <sighs> I know, that's what I was, I was there, like, have I just um, leaked something? <laughs> we've got another question coming in, so we'll drop that up. Cool. Uh, another question off YouTube. Uh, what is the one ASG gun that you would uh, that you never hear about or see anymore and only know one person has ever had that model? Oh. Mm. What is the one ASG gun that you never hear about? I think that's like going back in day. Going back way, way, way. So, Do you know what? Actually, mm. I would say uh, this is going back really, really. And I only saw this because um, I had a really old ASG catalogue. Mm. Um, it was the ASG Sistema. 
because mm. we used to distribute Systema. The, like ASG. the version two gearbox version of no, the no, or, ASG used to yeah. Well, distribute a, Systema, Systema used to do version two gearboxes yeah. as well as yeah, yeah. No, this stuff. is this is going back like we're talking years, years and years, and years, and years, and years, and years, and years. Yeah, and I think that if you had one of them with ASG stamped on the side of it, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I think crazy, one, isn't it? I think a modern one that you probably don't see often, I bet a few people have got them hidden away, is the stubby gold Dan Wessons. Oh my God, yeah. Because they just sort of, they were super, super popular, but you never saw them at a field. No, no. And then we had one left upstairs for ages, and some guy came in and went, I've been looking for that for ages. I've been looking for it for ages, but you don't see them on fields. I think it was, there's a lot of things like that that become collector edition. Airsoft is never going to be, buy it 20 years down the line, sell it for profit. It's, You'll buy it, leave it in a box, and just oh, enjoy this, it. This is really, really cool. Yeah. I might use it once or twice, but that's it. God, yeah, the yeah. gold down west. But the, the stubby one. Yeah, I know really, exactly really what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like ankle horse. The type. It's, do you know what it reminds me of? Do you remember playing? Oh, what was it? Was it? Um, oh, I can't remember. You know the Godfather game. It, we're uh, talking yeah. about original Xbox, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? You had that gold stubby yeah. pistol in the in, in the Godfather game. It was really good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think you could you could just have that hidden in a. a, a Anything, ankle holster <laughs> or something like that, and you've, you you're dripping it, and that's that's the kind of thing that I think adds a bit of quirk to like yeah. the the Gucci gear. You're in, you've got your cry on, you've got your airframe, you've got your plate carrier, you've got all your stuff, and all of a sudden you just pull out this gold. This is this gold, or a flint looking lock like on. a mafia boss. Yeah. <laughs> just pull a flint lock out of your dump pouch or something. Just add that quirky stupidness to your load. I think that's great. But yeah, uh, there's another question dropping in, so oh, we'll cool. that. Um, ooh. The USW or Bren will? Oh, I think they're two very different. They platforms. are very different, but I think to suit my playstyle now and after shooting it, I really like the USW. Yeah, I if, really. If you're like a CQB it. fanatic, yeah, I think it's almost a no-brainer for the USW. What I like about it as well as a go, uh, as a blowback pistol is the slide will never go back and hit you. No, it's got it's, it's, it's recessed into the actual kit, so, so you can put your face as close as you want to that. All um, this is recessed in, so that when the slide does come back, it will never just, ever touch no you. Movement back here, so, so you can be as close as you can to the site to create a good amount of field of view. Yeah, and just uh, that's what I really like. And again, about with it. it being railed as well, if you do uh, struggle with um, small sites, iron sites, and all that, you could put an EOTech on there. Oh god, yeah. You could put a, a, yeah. a holographic on there. If you wanted to, you yeah. Could put you put an put... SRS on there. You could put something massive on there and it just still work for you. Yeah, it would yeah. Um, and with it being shoulderable, I've always had that thing with SMGs and it's one of my it grinds my gears a little bit, mm. is if people run around with like an Evo over folded stuff. Oh God. And it's if something's yeah. meant to be shouldered, shoulder it. Shoulder it. I'm shoulder I'm, it. I'm ex- do you know what? I share this with you. And and it's like with If the, not just use a pistol. Yeah, it's like with the UMGs <laughs> or um like an SMG 5K or something like that. Yeah. If it's not on a sling or all like that, and they're just like, they're like just shoulder it, you'll you'll hit. You'll them be then. better. Yeah. <laughs> you'll only have to shoot one. <laughs> uh, we've got another one dropping in, so we've got another question. Oh, it disappeared too quick that time. Uh, so another one off uh, YouTube. Any? Oh, I knew this was going to come. Any ASG prototype uh, platforms which oh have never released to the public. So this isn't stuff coming. No, I know, I know, um, I know, I know. So I'd, I'd just do a yes or no for this because I know. you don't even know if you're allowed to tell I, uh, Exactly. Um, yes. I think, <laughs> I think that's, I mean, you can probably, I think every company has yeah. that. It's not, it's not, it's a, it's not there, a super right? secret thing that most companies, R&D is R&D. Yes. It's research and development. If something doesn't work, it, scrap you it. move on to something else. Of course. Or it develops into something else. So like the USW, you, because you've got that, B and T uh, relationship mm-hmm. that was probably a thing from start, but I bet at the start it was probably we want a compact personal defence weapon. What do we do? What do we do? Research. And, you, and you'll have yeah. gone out and had this big pool of absolutely everything, mm-hmm. absolutely every different one. Right? Is there a CZ one? No. Is there a B and T one? Yes. Yeah, is there yeah, is this yeah. one? Can we get that license? Oh, probably not. It's too expensive. We've already got this one. We'll go down exactly that. that. And that R and D is a massive, massive thing. Um, and obviously, you're going to follow. Not the path of least resistance, but the most sensible path for a company. Yeah, you know, we, we also talk with um, the firearms companies and ask what their sales are like. Yeah. Do you know, you know how does it all work together? Again, it's that range yeah. day trend. Yeah. If you can get the real steel range day trend, you're already on to a winner because you're not having to do the advertisement yourself. It's already there. It's all over YouTube. It's all yeah. over the computer games. It's yeah. what's going to be. And it's trying to beat the trend to it. Yes. So if you can speak to them and go, oh, we've sold, we've got the license for 
COD 7 for this, this, and this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. get on that. Yeah. And we do. Uh, so we've got an, another couple of questions coming in. Uh, Dom on Facebook. Will the Bren... Uh, Will the Bren be made available again uh, as they are very scarce and also unique? Yes. yes. It's, it's yeah, again, what we need to speak about. You know, the, the, the canals, yeah. the, 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 the issues with supply. It's, like what we were saying earlier, yeah. I think the main problem that happened with the Bren is when it came out, it was competing against that. Yes, um, yes. Everyone's like, oh, ASG are bringing out something else and it's the Bren, it's the Bren, it's the Bren. It's going to be awesome. It's good. And it was, it was but... It was the thing that we were focusing on at the time. ASG bring out AAGs all the time, but mm-hmm. because it had the license, people presumed it was going to be the next Evo. But it was just, it's another product. It's a different line and stuff like that. And that thing trying to compete against the Evo was oh, a very God. difficult yeah, thing. Yeah, I agree. But, the looks of it, though, it's gorgeous. But if people put it in their hands and put it down a range, they realized it was ridiculous. Yeah. Because um, again, uh, Pete runs his Bren and he's he swore by it. Uh, again, he runs the. MP9 because it's lighter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's 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 done the same thing. So he slicked down his gear, gone for the MP9 yeah, chest yeah. rig, and just stuff like that. Again, he's had the Bren, and there's loads and loads of people. You see him online going, "Why did I not buy a Bren sooner?" See, I see it everywhere. A lot of people say, "Oh, the Bren's really nice. It looks really good." And oh, but it's where not an is Evo. It? It's because not an it's Evo, ASG. Yeah. It has to, it has to compete with that. Yes. But if it if it was anywhere else, if it just came out as a CZ Bren, mm-hmm. and people, oh, it's just it's another thing, and they try it. Yeah, it's like a Crytac doesn't have a MOSFET or all like that, but no. you'll try it and you'll fire it and it's amazing. And the Bren, its range is just silly. Do you think people just... keep guns stock anymore though? No. Do you know what I mean? Like, so really, but that's what you try and that's what you've got to try and argue against people to do. Of is course. Buy what you want. Buy something that looks nice. Play it on a field and then realize what you want it to do. Exactly. Don't buy something. What you've heard on the internet. And then throw this in it, this in it, this in it, this in it. Yeah. Because then you've not experienced what's going to make it, it can better. Do. That is now your normal. So if you take it to a field, play with it, uh, see what range you get, see what your groupings like, and go, oh, my range is all right actually. Yeah. I just want to bring the tighter barrel. Tighter barrel in. Yeah. I want. A, I want. A, oh, my iron sights aren't really working for me. I want a dot sight. Boom. So Rather than going internal, look externally as well. Yeah, yeah. Trace a unit. It's it's not a, an upgrade, it's a feature. And yeah. nine times out of ten, if you have a trace unit on a stock gun in CQB compared to an upgraded gun, you're going to have more fun. Yes. Because oh, God, yeah. you yeah. can see where your BBs are going, they're bouncing all over, you're firing lasers everywhere, and you're basically in space. So it's a lot more fun. <laughs> you are in space. You're in space. And there's there's a thing that I keep telling people to do with trace units as well, is if you especially if you're running mid-caps, Put about ten, so red tracers don't work very well no. with uh, thing. But with um, UV flashing trace units, the B and T one that you guys do is a normal flash. Yeah. So it works. Yeah. The ones that flash with the UV, if you Purple put like light, ten yeah. red BBs in it to start with, and then fill it with green, you know when you're running out. You know when you're running out, so you never go dry on someone because if you're firing green and then you come out and you just dry on someone, whereas if you're running around and then all of a sudden you're still firing, but you get a little faint when you go. Oh, I'll yeah, change. I need to change my mag. And, and, and it's little things like That's that good. that yeah. are going to upgrade your gameplay rather than your platform that you've not played with yet. Yes. And then once you've been out, once you've played at a couple of CQB sites, a couple of Woodland sites, and decide what you want it to do, not what people have told you it can do. Mm-hmm. It's like the whole TM thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong. Spending all that money on a TM makes them incredible. Mm. But if you don't use it standard... You don't know what you've improved. Yeah, you, can, you don't know you what you want, and you can't get a, a, a relevance yeah, of, what of what's got there. Yeah, very much so. Very uh, much we've so. got some more questions dropping in. So, uh, another question on YouTube: uh, What are your two favorite airsoft replicas? Uh, I th- well, I think that can be probably a two-part question. So, it can really, yeah. What are your two favorite, regardless of anything? Yeah, and yeah. is there anything that isn't made? That you'd love as a Ooh, replica. Okay, that's quite cool. Because obviously, you, there's there's a lot. Of, uh, I'm I'm very weird when it comes to favorites. I don't really have favorites because your mood can change. Yeah. So I've got like the, I've got a salient. I've got my systema. I've got yeah, a pistol. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got bits and bats. But depending on what mood I'm in, favorites can change quite a lot. Yeah. Um, you could be in a gas day. You can be that. But for you, it's a tough one. Um, do you know when it comes to favorites? I think. I really like an L119A2. Mm. That, that, it's the rail. Build. It's the rail. Yeah. Do you know, because 
it's so different. Sleek. Yeah, it's yeah. just so different though. But and I find it really aesthetically pleasing. Mm. Like, I really like the look of that. It's they're they're slick and sort of they've got that yeah. sort of aggressive posture. To yeah, them when yeah. You, when you're moving forward, really like yeah. it. Um, I'm excited about. I forgot who's making it. It's a company making it. I think it's Archwick, mm. right? And I think they're making one. Oh, like, full build, full build, right? Right, which I'm very, which apparently is monolithic. Well, I know Hayo have done yeah. an, an upper. Yeah, but apparently this is a full gun that's mm. monolithic as well, which I'm very excited about. And I don't know if you've seen it. Have you seen the Alien Pistol? I think it's called out. the Alien Pistol, and I, and I think I forgot who makes it, but it was at Shot Show, and it's the coolest looking pistol ever. Yeah. Like, Super Space Age. Uh, it's kind of isn't isn't. It's, they just called it the Alien Pistol. It's not from Alien or, no. or you know any films or anything like that. It's just it looks so good. <laughs> like it looks just really nice. And that that's actually one where I'd say I wish they made that. Yeah. So something that's not made. Yeah. I wish they made yeah. that. Like if if anyone could make that, I would love to see that because yeah. that is a really nice piece of kit. I yeah, think. Good. I, I I always seem to go back to M4s. Yeah, and and currently the the Sistema build is just performing so so well. Um, so it, before that, what's it based off? My Sistema mm. is it's just a, a, a build. Uh, okay. So it's a it's short front rail forge receiver. So it's just a standard sleek nice. M4. But previous to that, I had so I've had Pole Stars, had Earth and that, and then Yeba built my M4. Cool. Uh, so the Titan build, and it got to a point where that was performing that well. Everything else just stopped getting used, so I sold it all. And it, for that lot, for a long period of time, I had that one gun. And I think every airsoft player might get to that at one point. Yeah. And it's that thing of you'll start airsoft, you'll get something, and then you'll just collect, 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 collect. And then all of a sudden, you'll find that thing that you've been looking for, mm. and nothing else gets used. But now I've gone to that point where I'll just have it because I like it. Yeah. Um, you but, think it's cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a bit, you there think are, it's cool. There's a couple of bits that are coming soon that I'm very excited about. Mm-hmm. That ha- a lot of people will say I'm not skirmishable, but I'm going to prove them very wrong. <laughs> um, and if if and again, this is coming back to the new system of motor. Once that is again in a few years' time, and grips aren't needed, and motors aren't needed, um, when gears become the motor I've seen and it. EBR, I've seen so it. once that becomes a thing, and people start making really good functional EBRs like an M14 that has that's not just got that gearbox in it, I think mm. that'll be really good. But yeah, I do like I I play for the the ambience and the, the style, so Shell Eject. Oh so I would love a Shell Eject. Years and years, years ago I had a top Japan Shell Eject and oh, for the electric so cool. one. Um worked great on full auto semi auto it really didn't like it, it was a little bit slow. Uh but the rare arms. Um Oh, shell ejecting is cool. CO, CO2. I really like the Cam 870 as well. You yeah, know, shotgun. A um, few of our guys have had them. Very, very they're cool. They're cool. A lot of fun. And a lot of people say, oh, they're not they're not skirmishable because you've got to go pick your rounds up. You can have platforms for different styles of play. Yeah, so yeah. There's, there's events where you go and you'll, you'll put 2,000 rounds downrange in an hour. There'll be other events that you go to that are a bit more slower paced, Controlled. a bit more story driven. Like You're doing. Yeah, a little bit like that. And I think they'll be perfect for it. Yeah, I agree. And you either build it into like an L119, the shell eject. That'd be so cool. That'd be so, so cool. Oh, my God, Or yeah. you build it into like an SPR like Lone Survivor and you're in a window with oh, just the rounds. Oh, man, that'd be so in, cool. Yeah. So that's that's where I'd go if money wasn't an option. Yeah. Um, and just have something really, really cool and something super different. Yeah. A shell ejection. I just think that's super cool. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the Top Japan one was really, really cool. It worked great in... Full auto, semi auto, it struggled a little bit. I played that in our indoor site and then just didn't pick it on the things up. But now, with 3D printing, oh god, yeah. that cost of buying the shells. I mean, if you go to an airsoft day and you throw a smoke grenade, that's the same as an entire bag of shells. So it, you can argue it that way, but if you just print yourself 500 shells and just run it for a little bit, if you're running DMR and you're being sneaky, I think it can, it's not. Unskirmishable. No, you've just got to play around it. Yeah, and if you're playing for the immersion and the difference, I think I think that's be. cool. Well, well, the Camel Seventy had a shell capture. Yes, you know, you, like, you, you can do that. It can't, it can't, for me, that defeats. It, yes, the, the, it's like, like the what, cool shell what, flying yeah. out anyway. It's like, oh, it's got the shell catcher. You can just put that aside. Yeah, but, that but I don't the... want to. I want to <laughs> see want the it shells flying, flying everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I remember years and years and years ago, there was a, a pistol platform that they did it, and rather than need a full shell, 
it was almost like a plastic washer that you put the BB in. Oh, interesting. And that flew off instead. So it was super, super cheap. It was like you could buy them in bags of like a thousand. Oh, that's cool. So instead of being a full shell, it was a little bit, yeah, you could never get all of them. You can't get all oh, of the man. top Japan anymore. No. But no. Rare Arms have got their things, and hopefully we might have well. something next month. Maybe. <laughs> but again, as soon oh. as they land, we'll be doing live streams on them, and we'll have a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, but I think stuff like that will be really good for um, production companies. Yeah. So get away from the blanks and all the safety and this that, and the other. If they can just have something that is oh god, yeah, because throwing rounds out cheaper. It's easier, I can do everything now, yeah. you know. And I think that's just a really cool way of doing it. Uh, but I think if we've got no more questions, I think we have covered a lot there. Um, awesome. And we've gone through a lot of really really cool stuff. So very excited for the stayer for that mm. to turn up the stayer scout. Uh, we've kind of laid the foundations for maybe an event in the future. We don't know. If well, you want another Evo event, you should let us know. Well, that's it. Yeah. That's or if just question. an ASG event, we'll um, yeah, we'll we'll rock that boat when it comes to it. But <laughs> if that's been everything for today, it's been great talking to you. It's great to have so many questions. Um, putting you on the spot all the time. No, it's, it's fine. Great. Um, and hopefully you don't get in too much trouble. But. Uh, <laughs> We will be back again tomorrow. It will be a normal live stream tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, and we'll review just uh, something on the website. Again, as always, uh, if you've got any suggestions what you want us to talk about, please drop us a line. Uh, but if that's everything, it's been great to speak to you. And we'll see you in a bit. Bye. Great.